Vladimir Putin is waging a bloody and brutal war against Ukraine. We're in for incredibly gruesome and grotesque weeks ahead of us. But the worst may be yet to come. As far as Putin is concerned, he is now in a state of war with the West and with NATO. It's just terrifying, no? How far will Putin go? The Economist's experts discuss the threat of escalation. Ed, what's your take on this? You wrote this week that escalation is a narcotic uh, for Vladimir Putin, one of the more memorable lines of your leader. How big a risk is that? It's important to understand the impulse for escalation, which is that if the war is going badly um, for Putin, then the, his answer is to escalate. If he feels that the West is supplying too many arms, then the answer is to escalate. And he's, he is depending on the fact that he is willing to out-escalate all of his opponents and drive them off and, and intimidate them. But that is a dangerous calculus, and it's one that, that, that most of us are, are simply not used to. I mean, what worries me about Putin is he has both the willingness and the capability to take this to really extreme levels. There's been talk about possibly use of a battlefield nuclear weapon. So we're in, a, we're in a very unhealthy dynamic. Putin will act and go as far as he needs to, he feels, uh, because he knows that he's got nuclear and Russia cannot be, cannot be attacked. So uh, it's less of a deterrent, more sort of impunity cover for Putin to go further. I also worry about the possibility of the use of a battlefield tactical uh, nuclear weapons. Uh, this is something that is now being openly discussed, both in Russia and in Ukraine. Somebody, you know, mentioned to be reminded me of the line which Vladimir Putin used uh, two years ago in a Valdai speech, when he apparently said, well, you know, if there is nuclear, we'll all die, but we will go to heaven and you will just rot. I am afraid about the use of chemical weapons. I think we've seen in the last few days Russian officials like Sergei Lavrov issue completely unfounded and bogus allegations of US chemical weapons laboratories in Ukraine. Sergei Shoigu, the defense minister, talking about US private mercenaries using chemical weapons in, in Ukraine. And I fear all of that could be used as a pretext for chemical weapons use inside Ukraine, which would be blamed on Ukrainians or, or indeed on Americans. Uh, and it would justify a major Russian escalation. What is the risk of the war turning into a direct confrontation between NATO and Russia? Whenever you have an invasion involving 190,000 troops on the edge of a rival's territory, on the edge of NATO territory, there is a uh, uncomfortably high risk of escalation. I think, the, for me, the most significant pathway to escalation at present is the question of arms supplies. There are lots of arms depots sitting in Eastern Europe, in Poland and other countries bound for Ukraine. And if they feel that this, this is an existential problem for them, that this is their the future of their war in Ukraine, that the West is supplying their enemy, we've already seen warnings from the Russian leadership. We should fully expect sabotage, direct action, explosions against those arms depots in Europe. I think we can easily imagine if this war goes badly for them, if it drags on, if they feel or fear the West is providing more sophisticated weapons, uh, they could escalate by directly targeting those sites. And we could then see a, a, a pressure within NATO to invoke Article 5 or to respond in some other fashion. So I think the risk is there and it is, a, it is absolutely a real one, given that Russia in particular is willing to escalate the level of risk to try and deter the West at this stage which of course makes everything considerably more more uh, dangerous. The key break on escalation at the moment is the fact that NATO is bound together by Article 5 and countries that aren't in NATO aren't. So if Putin does things in Ukraine, there is no obligation from NATO to do anything about it. If um, Putin has a direct attack on a, on a NATO country, then there is an obligation to do something about it. And the credibility of that obligation is absolutely key. What we will see is attempts by Putin to blur that commitment of Article 5, to try and cast doubt on it by doing things that aren't quite serious enough to cause an Article 5 event, but at the same time are very offensive and erosive. And if you do that enough, you start to kind of loosen the um, architecture of NATO. And then I think we get into really, really dangerous territory 
because the calculation from Russia is that they can go farther and intimidate everybody. And Article 5 really doesn't matter very much. But NATO has to demonstrate Article 5 does. And then before you know it, you're in, in a war between NATO and Russia. If Russia is at war with NATO, then I don't see how you stop escalation getting getting really, really bad. And, and, and I, I could see that easily ending in, in a nuclear exchange. This is one man with more power than anybody had in Russia since Stalin. I mean, Stalin did have pretty much the same amount of power, paranoid about uh, his security. A man who spent uh, two years from what we understand, in fact, in a bunker, isolating from, from COVID. We see his uh, meetings with Foreign Minister Lavrov and his Defense Minister Shoigu seated at about, looks like 20 meters apart, not just because of COVID, but because the security services are paranoid about uh, the possibility of assassination attack. Now, what we also have known about Putin since the beginning is that he is a man who does not and never has uh, accepted his mistakes and never admitted to them. We know that Putin used to back off a bit tactically. He would then sort of go back again, but this time he is not backing uh, uh, at all. And uh, yes, I, I'm worried about his state of mind and the uh, this very, very small cabal of people around him who now have... They know they're part of this. They know they're going all the way down with him. There is no way out. What off-ramps can the West offer Mr. Putin for a dignified exit from Ukraine? We know exactly what he wants. And what he wants is he's waiting for that telephone call to come from President Biden, the only man he wants to negotiate with, possibly uh, Prime Minister Johnson uh, and Macron, offering him... Uh, a peace conference where America, Britain, France, and Putin will sit down and say, "Okay, so you don't want to go. You don't want the war all the way because ultimately you, you will not solve anything. You'll just destroy Kiev, and you'll destroy Ukraine, but you will not be able to control it. We don't want endless bloodshed. So let's talk about how we carve up that part of the world. You know, which part of Ukraine stays in the Western sphere of influence?" Which part stays in, in Russia's sphere of influence? Uh, where Georgia, uh, Moldova and other parts lie? Uh, he wants a another carve up of the world. And he said that. And that's ultimately what he wants. So what he is waiting for is that telephone call to come. The minute that telephone comes, uh, telephone call uh, comes and they, they propose a carve up that Putin will declare uh, as his ultimate victory. Short of that, I'm not sure where he stops. What's the current Russian state of Russian public knowledge and opinion of what's happening in Ukraine more broadly? I mean, how effective is the propaganda war being? Do ordinary Russians, how do they feel? I've uh, covered Russia for more than 20 years. I've never seen Moscow being so tense. Uh, there was surveillance uh, everywhere. There were searches of cars. People were being followed. Uh, there was talk of martial law. Uh, people were uh, in a state of sort of nearing panic. Now, Russia is a very big country and it's a multi-ethnic country. And I'm just wondering how long is it going to say for people, um, elites in Siberia or elites in Tatarstan, where Ed and I just been recently to say, uh, you know what, this is not our war. Why is Moscow doing this to us? This anti-Moscow sentiment is already incredibly strong across the country. He is risking destroying not just Ukraine. He is actually seriously risking destroying the, uh, Russia itself. To read more about the war in Ukraine, please click the link to visit our hub where you'll find all of our coverage. Thanks again for watching and don't forget to subscribe.